If I said to you today, I've got an iconic song with an iconic group, you'd be really impressed, wouldn't you? I am. It's Radiohead and Creep, and I haven't heard it since the 90s, and I definitely haven't seen them sing it live. So for me, it's kind of, and I cut my finger, everybody, in case you're wondering, but that's another story for another day. But let's get back to Radiohead. We all tend, we have an awful tendency to sing to our favorite songs, because this was one of my... Now, first of all, we're going to reflect on the world-renowned alternative rock band Radiohead was formed by five friends, vocalist, guitarist Tom York, guitarist Ted O'Brien, guitarist keyboard Johnny Greenwood, and bassist Colin Greenwood, and drummer Phil Selway, who first met at a private boys' school just outside Oxford, England. And they followed it with their monster hit, Creep. Now, that's all I'm going to say on the bio. Check out... Um, the description and the rest of the bio attached to this particular video and then we're going to go into what the hell is this song about that we're all singing and we were in the 90s in the album version lead singer tom york sings you're so effing special for radio he recut it as you're so very special and he regrets doing that because he said it took away for him excuse me uh, the song's anger as a result and York says, this is about being in love with somebody, not feeling good enough. And he describes the feeling as, there's the beautiful people, and then there's the rest of us. Now, York wrote it in 1987 while he was a student at Exeter University in England, and he recorded it acoustically. This was written before the band formed, and York gave his demo version to Colin Greenwood, who joined him and helped him. Put it together. Now this wasn't released in the US until Radiohead's debut album in 1993 and the band finished college and signed their first record deal in 1991. Now I've got the lyrics in front of me to go through when they're singing it and then I'm going to give you my reaction, my interpretation of the song because it'll be interesting as they sing and, and I actually think I'll listen to them then i'll re react to the lyrics with you i really will looking forward take it ahead radio, radio your head take it away and creep <laughs>
was absolutely epic. It was absolutely brilliant camera work as well. I'm just loving the live version of it. Do you know what? Years ago, and I'm going to pull you back a few years, we used to go and, and you, you used to have to write, and I miss the hat you know the signs on the cardboard where you'd say we love you and the love heart songs and you see it very visually you don't see anything with a camera only bright lights everywhere but and it's nice and it's great and we get videos like this and we can react to and all of that but i just miss that moment where you spend at least a couple of hours doing it and adding your bits to it and then all the fans would hold up with you know their uh, love to the band in with cardboard and, and the pictures of them and you know they'll always be the favorite member of the band and, and it, 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 it's kind of lost its way with just phones I think I think anyway but besides that we got a good video to talk about the live version what did I think of it come on come on we miss live concerts don't we I I think the music business is going to come out of this really, really well, the pandemic, because people are going to line up. They don't care. They won't care with their favorite band if they have to wait five hours outside shopping centers like you see young ones today to get the first tickets in the ticket booth that sells the tickets for the concerts. They won't mind um, having to be security checked and wait outside for an hour or two while they go through all the people. Because we do have to be careful because of the um, Manchester bombing and things like that so you know um, we just we just need to move on move on and one of the greatest things that I think is when everybody sings together now he did he did say the effing word in this version because it's not a radio edit is it so first uh, impressions fantastic <coughs> <clears throat> delivery of a song that is so iconic come on now what are the lyrics about and all the fans will know when you're here before couldn't you look in the eye you're just like an angel your skin makes me cry you float like a feather in a beautiful world I wish I was special you're so effing special and for you know YouTube and maybe younger ones tuning in I can't really say the F word myself so I have to edit it as I speak but aren't they just, you know, the, it's, it's almost like recognize me for what I am, please. You know, um, I'm in front of you. To me, you're my everything. And I think it goes back to when he first wrote the song, it was all way back in 1987. He was a young teenager. And don't we all have teenager crushes and we come out of it that we just feel, I remember having a crush and I'm in actually in touch with her to this day and uh, via Facebook and we end up um, I had such a crush on a girl in a class and I'll, I'll say her name is Steph now Steph would be complimented she's mentioned in a video and I used to sit behind her and to be her and her two friends and and I had I almost felt that it was like come on turn around and notice me and I was always the joker in the class to get attention but she never did and her, it was her hair and her laugh and she always smiled and I loved that in her I just found all the other girls were very uh, way back then it was very convent like but she was very outgoing and, and she attracted that kind of outgoing personality I had a great personality but obviously aesthetically it was just overlooked 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 so I, I, I can relate to that. I, I can relate to those lyrics. I really can. Um, and Steph, even though you turned me down, we're still friends to this day. So, hey, come on. I'm not going to complain. And the chorus, but I'm a creep. I'm a weirdo. What the hell am I doing here? I don't belong here. Now, that's self-punishment. That's him putting himself like, obviously, I'm not good enough. Obviously, I'm ugly. Obviously, I don't have what it takes to attract this person. Um, unbelievable. I'm here physically, but I'm like a ghost in this person's life. They just, they just don't see me. So there's the anger coming out there as well. Punish, and the anger is coming out punishing himself in these lyrics, which surprises me. 
I didn't expect that now and I'll be looking at the song a bit differently I think from now on I don't care if it hurts I want to have control I want to have a perfect body I want a perfect soul I want you to notice when I'm not around I, I, I um, you know he's a, this is a situation of that we've all been in when it comes to love we're not in control if a person doesn't respond you're not in control of that situation so it ends up you know come on I want to be in control of this I want to be the main man I want you to be in my arm I want us to be doing things together but sometimes in life it just doesn't happen and so again he goes back in the lyrics you know I am I know you are so he almost like pushes himself away and says you're everything you're so special that's why you don't look at me because I'm not it's actually very sad it's a very sad song, I have to say.